Hey guys, this is Matt. Welcome back to my garage. And today we have a lot to do. The two car shows I've been trying to get to are actually tomorrow. And you know, the weather looks great right now. They're actually calling for rain the next couple of days, which uh, doesn't bode well for driving the car. There's some issues with some leaks in the cars and things like that. So I don't really like driving it out in the rain. I really do have a lot to do in order to get this car drivable. Like I mentioned previously, I've got some insulation I need to put down in the floor pans and part of the firewall, but primarily I want to focus on the transmission tunnel just because we did take some of the insulation and sound deadening off as part of what the fire damage did. But I also want to get a nice additional heat insulation all along the tunnel and also probably tackle the driver's side floor pan just because that's kind of where the exhaust runs through. But after we get that insulation in, I'll be able to run some of my pre-wiring for the audio system. Um, so I've got speaker cable coming from the front doors. Both of these are signal wires for the amplifier. But before I do any of that, I have a few wires that I need to address. On the JDM cars, that wire up there is for the exhaust temperature probe or catalytic converter temperature probe. and it's pretty much the whole time I've driven this car, the heat warning light is always on in the dash. And I think it's just probably because something has gone on with this or because there isn't a catalytic converter on the car. I'm not gonna entirely remove that, but I think I'm gonna disconnect the connection. And my understanding is that there's, you know, thermosist or whatever it is, is reading less than 110 degrees Celsius. It runs 12 volts constant. And then as it gets up over 110, the voltage drops and that's what triggers the warning light. So I think if I take the two wires, the, the blue and yellow wires that are coming, that probe, and splice those together, hopefully it'll always read a 12 volt constant and I don't have to worry about that light coming on. I know I could just leave the light bulb out, but I think just defeating the system right now will leave further options if I wanna use that warning light for something else in the future. The seatbelt lights probably just need to be cleaned up a little bit and I'll go ahead and wrap everything with Tessa tape so we don't get any rattles. You know, there's a little bit of wiring over there I wanna clean up. First thing I need to do is tackle these wires and then we'll start getting the insulation put in. I think I have all of the wires that would be under the carpet that could potentially make a, you know, and rattle. I think I have everything wrapped on this side and the other side. Um, I'm not too worried about the where the seatbelt sensors plug in, at least for right now, once it's pulled through the carpet, I can wrap those, but they won't really make any noise if they're sitting on top of the carpet anyway. So I think that gets everything accomplished that I needed to accomplish prior to installing the insulation and the carpet. I do need to go through and vacuum this out one more time really well, and then wipe everything down with cleaner, maybe some rubbing alcohol, something along those lines, just to make sure all the surfaces are super clean so that the insulation can stick to it and not have any issues with peeling up. So that's probably what I'm gonna do right now. I'll check back in when we go to install some of the insulation. The Dyna liner comes in a roll of, I think it's 32 inches by 54 inches. And I've got two of them. So I think it's gonna be enough to do what I need to do, but I'm gonna have to strategize a little bit on how I'm gonna get this in the car. So I know my primary focus is gonna be the transmission tunnel. So my options are I could, you know, set this roll centered on the transmission tunnel, let it come down each side, and then we'll have, you know, a line probably that rides, you know, maybe back here where transmission tunnel's smaller, it folds down onto the floor, and then up here, maybe it's up high. So that would leave an awkward line that we would have to cut to. Probably not that difficult to deal with, but still um, would be there. Another option would be to basically draw or you know have a pretend line that runs down the center line the edge and let whatever rolls down over so there's lots of ways it could be done for me i think i'm going to go ahead and center this on the transmission tunnel and tuck it up there as far as i can i will lift up the factory kind of um, insulation 
stuff that's that black stuff that's back there. I will lift that up and tuck the dyne liner up underneath that on both sides and then roll it out as far as it'll go. But then I'll use the second sheet to kind of cut in and fill in the two sides on, you know, here and over there. But like I said, I think my primary focus is going to be the transmission tunnel. So I will go ahead and just center this on there and start rolling it out. It'll be hard to film, but I will try to set the camera up in the back. I'll probably be away in the way of a lot of the shots, but I will do a time lapse so that you guys can kind of see the progress. <laughs> I decided to cut the camera because it was just going to take a while and it, you got the concept. So I finished the transmission tunnel, at least with that first sheet of Dyna liner. And, you know, I did end up having to cut it in a lot smaller strips to fit around some of the curvature that Dyna liner doesn't have a ton of stretch or give to it. So you kind of have to fit it. I'm not really happy with some of the seams, but they're mostly closed and I tried my best to get them tight. But if I need to, and there's going to be some places I'll have to come back and probably put in some little filler pieces. So it's not going to win any awards for looking good, but no one's really going to ever see it once the carpet's in. So it doesn't matter. And of course I'm having to fit stuff, you know, like the e-brake connection and eventually, you know, where the, the cons, the dash is going to connect to, I might have to clean those up. So, and as I find screws and bolts, I'm trying to poke them through. There's a couple, I, you know, there's a few of them I know for the mounting of the center console, but um, I'll find those once uh, I've got, this, I'm getting ready to put that in. But, you know, I'm trying to locate all the fasteners as I go and basically let those poke through. So now I'm gonna open up my second box of Dyna liner. On this side, you know, I'll basically be able to start up at the firewall and come down. I'll try to keep it in small pieces so that I can kind of form it around everything, but I'll start up there and work my way to the back. The other side's basically gonna be the same, though I need a little bit more at the bottom of the transmission tunnel just because it, it you know, as this wrapped over, it didn't have as much on that side. But anyway, so I'm gonna open up that second box of Dyna liner and I'm gonna keep on going. So I finally made it through the 24 square feet I had of the Dyna liner, and I was just really gonna stop until I got to um, this kind of center brace on each side. I had some cutoffs that were decent size, so I just went ahead and put a few here, figured it'll help with the exhaust heat and whatever. So I didn't do the, the passenger side floor pan, but I wasn't planning to anyway. But I did get all the way up underneath the factory. I probably have one more spot up here that you can see the red paint I need to put a piece on. But um, other than that, it's all in there. And this is all I have left over other than a few small cutoffs. But, you know, it, I went through pretty much the entire 24 square feet um, getting to this point. I'll keep these in case I find something later on. If you were going to do the entire floor pan, including the rear bins, you probably need a total of 36 square feet. You should be able to cover the rear bins and the part that I didn't get to with another roll. But that's it for that. I don't think I mentioned this previously, but this is a quarter inch thick uh, Dyna liner. Here's a shot from the back so you can kind of see all of the progress. And then there's the passenger side. Like I said, I just went up to the center brace where the seat mounts because, um, you know, I don't think I'm not too worried about road noise. And I still have the factory sound deadening on, so it'll be okay. 
So with everything considered, this is about a four hour project. Really, it's just time consuming cutting out the pieces to fit. And like I said, my biggest recommendation would be cut the pieces smaller and you can butt the joints up and get them looking pretty nice. So the next thing I need to get ready to do is run speaker wire from the front doors to the back and then do the pre-wiring, you know, the signal wires from where the head unit will be to the back where I can mount an amp pretty much wherever I want. I don't have an amp picked out just yet. Um, however, I can just leave the extra cable and, the, and wires in the back and then we can mount and figure all that out later once I do have the money and the time to put the audio, finish the audio system. But for now, I can go ahead and get all the pre-wiring before we install the carpet. I'm going to run 16 gauge twisted cable. And this is oxygen free copper cable that I got from New Concepts. Um, I think I have like 50 feet, which I think will be plenty for what I need, maybe with a little extra. I'll need to run the RCA cables from where the head unit will be back to the back where we would install an amplifier. And then I need to install a signal cable to turn the amplifier on and off with the, with the uh, head unit. So those are the three things that I need to get in the car now. This will be the most complicated because I'm going to try to feed it through the factory conduit whatever that is through the door i'll just put a little spool of the extra wire i'm not going to install that on the speakers right now but they'll at least be there for the future i need to start by fishing a wire through the factory location into the door and then we can start routing the wires along the door jams and then into the back and you can probably see it over there but the passenger side will basically be the same way well we can scratch everything i just said about running the speaker wire through the factory uh, conduit because i don't know if i can get a camera angle on that there's a connector that comes right through here in the body and it's it's not an actual grommet there's a, a, a connector a special connector that connects through the wall so there isn't an open passage that goes from here through that conduit and into the door so that's not how i wanted to start this project but i think what i'm going to do just for the time being I'll run the two wires down the transmission tunnel. I'll mark one left and right. And that way I can always splice into the factory speaker locations and the factory wiring harness. It's potentially in the future, I may need to come in and drill some holes and do some stuff like that. But you know, I don't wanna, that wire that I've got is pretty thick. So I don't wanna have to worry about it getting bound up in the door for right now. So for this project, I'll just run all four cables down the transmission tunnel to the back of the car. So I just temporarily set the two signal wires. Um, you know, I put a little spool of wire where the head unit's gonna be, and then I'm gonna track the wires along. It'll actually probably be closer to the side of the transmission tunnel, not exactly over top of it. And then we'll feed it up and continue it all the way to the back. So there's a couple places where I'll be able to do some wire management, but for the most part, I think I'm gonna just tape these wires down. And that way, if once everything's in the car and in the future I go to install the audio system, I find any issues, it'll be relatively easy to pull these wires back through or pull them out if I need to. Last thing I need to do is get the two front door speaker cables ran, um, basically the same path, and then I will get everything marked and get everything bundled together and secured down. Here's my wires all bundled up and kind of traced back to where they need to go. And again, right now I'm just concerned about the part that'll be underneath the carpet. Back here, I used the fa there's a factory hole in the body that I used to hold those, secure those wires for now. And I haven't secured the RCA cable just because it's thicker. I need to figure out how much clearance I'm gonna have with the rear bins before I really settle on all the location of all these wires. But for now, these are all routed up through and I've just got a little bundle where it'll come through where the head unit's at, where the, the shifter boot mounts down to the transmission tunnel. I just took these little plastic wire clamps and trimmed one side off and then fit that down over the threaded bolt and that'll hold those for now. And of course, I may have to make some final adjustments once those will probably go on top of the shifter boot. Like I said, nothing is permanently secure just so that if I need to reroute things once I get the carpet in, I can figure that out. Now I think I'm ready to go grab the carpet and test fit it. I will need to cut a, probably a couple slots in the carpet for those wires to run through, but let me go down in the basement and grab that carpet and we'll get that installed.
I really can't express to you guys how stoked I am to finally have a real carpet in this car. This was probably one of the very first things I purchased when I got this car. It's used, but it's almost brand new uh, factory carpet for a right-hand drive. So everything is you know, cut and molded, and it's been sitting in my basement flat for like a year. So some of the stuff is not quite sitting down. And of course I've added some insulation, which has, you know, takes up a little bit of volume. It definitely needs a little bit of uh, encouragement. And I know there's some more clips and things I got to put in, but for now, I think I've got it mostly set. Um, I'm not seeing any major issues. I've got all my, all my seat bolts lined up and wires pulled through. Of course it's dusty now you know once we're settled we can get it fully cleaned and shampooed and hopefully it looks like brand new this is a huge step for me because now you know hopefully everything else i've got to put back in the car is just a bolt-in type deal i'll probably need to let this car sit out in the sun and get hot one day and hopefully that helps the carpet relax a little bit i have been out sweating my ass off in the garage for like the last eight hours so i'm probably going to call it a night after i get a few more things buttoned up with this and make sure um, everything's lined up i'm probably not going to be able to take this to the car show because there's really no way to drive it and the car shows at nine o'clock in the morning so i'll probably take my bmw instead which is unfortunate because i really wanted to get this on the road i would hate to rush the process which inevitably could mean more work for me if i have to come back and undo things or if i you know skip something because i'm in a hurry i've got to cut the hole for the wires for the audio system to run through and i'll stay out here a little bit longer and keep trying to massage this carpet into place you know it's this is awesome i think i paid like 400 or 350 dollars for this carpet and that i know that that's just the way rx7 parts go um, if you had a left-hand drive car i do believe there's more aftermarket options for that uh, new carpet but anyway this one is perfect for what i need i can't wait to get the rest of this installed and hopefully you learned something from this video i'm gonna get my area cleaned up in the garage and i'm gonna get inside and cool off for a little bit thanks for watching and i'm gonna catch you guys on the next one